In between, that's right. In the morning, in the evening, in the supper time. You got your Bible. We got so many places to go. Let's go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 7. Matthew 24, verse 7. I was uh, in the cancer center just about all week. Met some amazing people to do some amazing work, but as I was walking out of the cancer center and watching all these people that were going through surgeries and, and all the things they've been going through, and there were some people that were in some pretty rough shape, and then there were some that was, you know, uh, were doing pretty good, and, and so I watched all of this, but, but I was reminded in this whole adventure, the Lord asked me, where, where have you got your eyes? Are your eyes on now? Or are your eyes on me? Are your eyes on now? Or are your eyes on the future when I come back to get you? And so I had to admit, Lord, there's times where my eyes get kind of out of the, out of the ordinary. My eyes get kind of out of the way. And so uh, let's see here. Let me check this rascal out here. My... my Sermon with Zach in the cyberspace. Praise God. Thank you, Sermon. That's a good place for it to be. Somebody was praying extra hard. Got my sermon in the cyberspace. <laughs> It'll be a short day. No, it won't, because I'll preach longer without it. Yeah, it won't work. <laughs> y'all get up and talk to one another. I'll tell you what, I'm getting this thing ready. Y'all get up and talk to one another. Tell somebody how good they look or how bad they look or something. Y'all get up and find somebody walking around. Wait, get up. I, I got to give me a second for me on this. Did you manage to live 
live a well-planned life? Yes, she said to her friend. My first marriage was to a millionaire. My second marriage was to an actor. My third marriage was to a preacher. And now I'm married to an undertaker. Her friend said, what do those marriages have to do with well-planned life? She said, easy. One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and four to go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Anyway. It was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah, the first time I heard it was funny. Whew. Okay. The problem is turn to Matthew 24. Stand for the reading of the word. I'm not going to keep you long today. You always say that, and you always think, well, why do, why do you count as long? Amen. Amen. In basketball, just a minute means another 15 to 20. In football, a minute can mean 30. When your head's being held in the water, a minute should be less than. <laughs> Amen. Matthew 24. I could have made this into a three-parter, but instead, I just left it as a one-parter, and so I have a whole, I, I, took, I got a whole lot of bones in here, and you got to find the meat for yourself, because I want you to get this. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 27, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth into the west, so shall it be the coming or so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Stretch forth your hands this way. It's God for a special touch. And Lord, Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, God, for your precious, precious touch, your anointing. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch us in a very powerful way. Let us meet with you today, God, as you meet with us. Lord, you want us to have it more than, than we want it, Lord. You want us to be ready more than we want to be ready, God. You want us to have your power more then we want your power. I ask you right now, Lord, to help us, Lord, line up our wants with yours. In the name of Jesus, we love you, and we praise your name. And the church said? Amen. Amen, amen. Let's take somebody's hand on the way down and tell them, God's got this. God's got it. Amen. Amen. So just real quick, like, all right? This is a quick one. All right. Uh, <laughs> some of y'all are doubting me. All right, let's see. Ready? All right, y'all leave. No plan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we go. The promise. You know, uh, if, if you look through the Bible, one well, of the biggest things you can see my right look, I got a kiss. You know what I'm saying? This is a minute. I'm not talking about the, the band kids right had their picture up there. What subject is mentioned in the Bible? Matter of fact, one out of every 25 verses in the New Testament. What is it? Somebody want to guess? What's mentioned? One out of every 25 verses in the New Testament. Everyone want to take a guess? It's not money. Love. It's not love. But is it? Well, Jesus is good. It's his return. One out of every 25 verses in the New Testament has to do with the return of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, there it goes. So, what I'm going to do is kiss. I got kiss up here. That's why I said we're making this kind of a skeleton. Where it is, keep it simple, saying. All right, we're going to keep it simple today. And I want you to pay attention closely because. There is some discrepancies back and forth about the second coming of Christ. And, and then when you're reading the Word of God, all I want to do is I just want to, to, to explain something to you. The second coming of Christ, or the day, the day of the Lord, is not one day, but it is a series of events. All right? Remember this. It is a series of events. And because of the series of events, watch this now. Here it is. Watch this. See, see, see the Bible uh, doesn't give every detail about His return. It doesn't tell us every nook and cranny, uh, and most of the prophecy is still clouded in mystery. And, and some of the things that people used to talk about years ago, I remember as a kid watching on Sunday afternoon, preacher getting up talking about all these things, the mark of the beast and all this stuff, and I'd be scared to death, be under the table looking, and I'm thinking, well, how are they going to do all that? And now, it's so simple. Now, everything's right there. Everything is so easy. For it to happen. Look at all the things that lined up with the nations and the, 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 the intelligence of people, how it's, how it's growing and the knowledge and wisdom and the computer and all this. And so, so still, it's sealed up to the time of the end. So, so again, there's going to be some of the things we've been hearing about, you know, that we really can't put clear until actually now. In this generation, especially in this last hour, you can look at how, uh, look at Russia, 
You can look at Iran, you can look at Iraq, you can look at Syria, you can look at all these things in the Middle East, you can look at uh, how they're really against Israel. You, you'll see how uh, uh, this is the end time, and this is the end of the end time. If there was a clock, and midnight was, was the time he's coming back, we're seconds before midnight. That's how close we are. So, so one fact is clear, watch this now, Jesus is going to return to the earth again, visibly, literally, and victoriously. And here's going to be a picture of his return. So I'm just going to be kind of quick, and, and I'll stop a little bit every now and then, and we'll chew a little bit on it, but then we're going to keep on going, all right? So, so let's go ahead and go with the same. There's the second coming, and there's the rapture. Now, here's where the big mistake comes in. Here's where the big controversy happens. This is where people get all mixed up. Then this is where people say, well, how can this be happening? If he's coming for the rapture, then how can this happen? If he's, not, if he's coming second coming, then how can it be in the rapture? So watch this. Remember, it's a series of events. It's the day of the Lord. Okay? So, so, so it starts with the rapture, and it ends with the second coming with seven years in the middle. All right? So here it goes. I'm going to show you the difference. Now, now, now the rapture, Christ comes for his own. He comes. He snatches us up. Where we're taken away in the rapture. And let me just stop for a second and tell you, the rapture's not in the Bible. You say, well, where's rapture in the Bible? The word rapture is never found in the Bible. But if you look up in, in, in the Greek version, uh, excuse me, or the Latin version of the Bible that was written early on, one of the first translations, the Latin Vulgate. In the Latin Vulgate, the word caught up, which is in Thessalonians, and you see it caught up in several places in, in Corinthians and in Thessalonians, the word called up is harpazo. And harpazo means, to, or excuse me, it's rapio. And rapio is where we get the word rape. It's also where we get the word rapture. It means to take away something violently by force, something of virtue violently by force. So in a negative way, you think about rape. In a positive way, you think about rapture. So that's exactly where that comes from. That's where we get rapture from. So first, in, 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 the, in the rapture, he comes for us. In the second coming, we're coming back with him. In the beginning of seven years, he's coming to take us. All this stuff happens to us, the beam of judgment seat, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then we come back with him at the end of the seven years. The Bible says also in the rapture, believers are taken to the Father's house. But in the second coming, believers come from the Father's house to earth. In the rapture, he is only seen by believers, but in the second coming, every eye shall see him. In the rapture, he's working with fingers right here. There we go. Hit, hit the wrong button. Don't you hate it when that happens? Judgment begins at the second coming. It's the end of the judgment. It's the final. He's getting ready to take care of business. In the rapture, it's still, still a mystery. But in the second coming, it's foretold in the Old Testament. Again, <laughs> In the rapture, he cast Satan from heaven to earth. In the second coming, he finds Satan and casts him into a bottomless pit for a thousand years. In the rapture, he comes as a thief in the night. Because you don't know when he's coming. But you'll know when it's for the second coming because once he comes, you've got seven years to wait. And then he's coming. All right? Next, there's a pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, A-trib. There's other many kind of tribs. You know, I heard, heard one guy talking about Jesus and was looking at, down on earth and he was trying to come down to rapture his church and and, and the angel said, when are you going? He said, as soon as I can figure out all these charts everybody's written, when will it come back? All right, so, so watch. He, he'll need our help, amen? So, in the rapture, it signals the beginning of the tribulation. The second coming signals the end of the tribulation. So remember, the rapture, the second coming, it, it envelopes, or it is the bookends, to the day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord is the day of tribulation. That's what John saw on the Isle of Patmos when he said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. It means literally, I was in the Spirit, and the Lord carried me to his day, the day of wrath. And so he was allowed to see what was going to go on in those seven years. So that's the day of the Lord that he saw. So now, with that in mind, now let's go ahead a little bit. Now we'll talk about just a, a few of the places that we can find in the Bible that talks about, you're going to see the difference in the rapture and the second coming. Okay, for as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It's going to be a glorious return. Why well, is it going to be a glorious return? Can you imagine the power? I, I, I've heard of, I, I've seen lightning strike. 
I see lightning strike light lines. I see lightning strike buildings. I see lightning strike and, think, and, and transformers blow up. I've seen it uh, strike vehicles. It's done a lot of things. There's been ball players out on the field struck by lightning, and they were immediately fried right there on the football field. There's been guys also that, that were hit by lightning and knocked their hands and their feet off. That's how hard it hits. Can you imagine? <coughs> lightning can stop your heart. Lightning can just fry it. It's over with. Lightning has so much power behind it. It kind of makes you wonder why an old man would get out there with a kite and a string and a key. All kind of electricity. Yeah, didn't your mama teach you better than that? All right. So it's powerful. So, so the coming of the Lord is going to be powerful. It's going to be so powerful that it's going to shake every house where his believers are. It's going to shake the graves where the people are buried. It's going to shake the sea where they're buried. It's going to shake the book. Some of us Pieces of us are all over the place. They're all going to come together all at one time. So it's going to be powerful. And this lightning is going to be prompt. Lightning's here and it's gone. The most powerful force in the world's here and it's gone just like that. And then parted. It's going to be taken away. So, so first, the, 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 the coming of the Son of Man is going to be a glorious return. This is the rapture. Y'all say rapture. Rapture. Secondly, come on there, buddy. We got you. There you go. Ready or not, I'm coming back. It's an unexpected return. Because Matthew 24 and 44 says, Be ye ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man coming. Now, now, I don't know exactly what you're going through right now, and life just keeps changing. I was thinking about this week. I had no idea that Sunday night, I mean, we already had Beth in the emergency room on Saturday night. I thought she was having a heart attack. And the doctor said it wasn't. It was from the inflammation of the cancer. And so that was okay. But then on Sunday, she broke out in a rash here at church. And I'm colorblind. I couldn't see it. But it got so bad by the time we got to the hospital, I could see it. So that, and it wasn't, it just looked dark. It was just there. I could see it. And she wound up staying in the hospital until almost Thursday, until late Wednesday night. Uh, matter of fact, they built her up. She hadn't been eating. So they built her up on these steroids, intravenous steroids. We come home. And they got the prescription messed up, so she went without steroids for a day, and she went down quick. And, and so we got a little sand around the house. It's all fun and games until the steroids run out. Amen. She's been joking, y'all. It's okay to joke with her. She's, she told me, she said, I said, I hate that she loses so much weight. She said, well, that's one of the perks of cancer, Dad. I said, where'd you get that humor from? And she looked at me and said, do I have to ask? <laughs> okay. So, so the Bible says Jesus himself doesn't even know when he's coming back. He's waiting for the Father to tell him. So again, rapture. Y'all say rapture. rapture. Okay. Not only is it an unexpected return, I told you it's not going to be long. It's going to be a little return. You see, the Bible says in Acts, it says, which also said, you men of Galilee, this all these two angels, while you stand gazing up into heaven, this same Jesus which is taken for you into heaven shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into the heaven. Here's the problem I see in this day and time. We got people running around trying to find signs. They can't get me. The latest sign, the latest greatest, they're there. Gotta get it. And when that sign's gone, here it goes. Guess what? God never said some believers follow signs. God said signs would follow believers. Amen? So if we would get busy working for God, the signs would follow us. Amen? Quit looking. I, you know, I look at the sky all the time and say, Lord, is this day you can come back? You know, uh, uh, sitting there in the, in, in the cancer center at night, you know, looking outside or going outside the hospital and standing outside and looking up. It looks a whole lot different than it does standing on the possum track looking up. You know, and I'm looking up and I'm thinking, wow, all those lights and, the, and then the the the, 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 the the airport putting this putting this uh, a banner out there, or this light, a searchlight, and you look and think, wouldn't it be awesome if the next time the thing went around, Jesus was riding on it? And I said, come on, let's go home, son. So look, it's a little return. It's not something made up. It's not something that makes the song sound good. It's literal. It's going to happen. Ready or not, Jesus is coming. It doesn't matter if some of these people try to tell you that he's not. It doesn't matter if these kingdom now guys tell you that that's not the way it's going to be. That we're going to work our way into the kingdom and it's just going to all blend together. No, 
Red shirt. To take away something virtuous by force. That's the rapture. He's going to reach down and going to break it open. He's going to sound the trumpet and then we're going to rise. But then in Christ shall rise first. We're going to join them on the way. So watch this. Little return. Now it's a little return, but it is a, come on buddy, you can do it. There you go. How do you like that? You're sitting there watching TV and somebody comes in and robs you blind. How do you like that to happen to you? Come around in your house, take everything while you sit there sleeping, watching television, got a cup of coffee in one hand and a mug in the other. The Bible says it's a sudden return. 1 Thessalonians says that for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now, here we go. Again, you see it says the day of the Lord. So, so remember, now we're starting to transition. We've got the beginning. The rapture, we got the end, the second coming, the day of the Lord is in between those. This is the day of the Lord sandwich. Rapture is one piece of bread, second coming is another piece of bread, and the meat is seven years, tribulation. That's a hard thing to chew on, isn't it? Get it? Tough. Meat and sandwich? All right. Y'all are looking so intense, I'm trying to break it up just a little bit. Look at this. I was sitting there and I was thinking about the characteristics of a thief. Well, why did he say that he's coming as a thief in the night? And, and, and so as I began to think about it and I began to pray about it, the Lord just spoke it so, so wonderfully to me. And here it goes. Here it is. A thief looks for inconvenience. Not his, yours. If a thief's coming after you, he's not going to come after you while you've got guard dogs around you and while you've got a gun in your hand or while you've got your finger on the alarm or you've got 911 dial on speed dial and you're ready to go. Matter of fact, don't ever put your 911 on speed dial. If you can't remember 911, something's wrong anyway. But Linda, one time we were in we were in uh, Virginia, and we were in Virginia, and and we were at Appomattox Courthouse, which is not just a courthouse; it is a city, a little city. And so we're in Appomattox Courthouse. We're going through all the buildings, and Linda and I are there, and all of a sudden we're going through. We're going through one of the little, one of the last little buildings of saw where Lee and uh, Lee and Grant they, they signed. Uh, 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 he, he gave in and said we surrender and we were looking at all this stuff we go to the little, last little place we're walking through as we're walking through all of a sudden uh, my wife's phone rings and she says can I help you? and I, would, I couldn't hear the conversation and Linda went no, I'm fine I'm fine no, I'm sorry I had my phone 911 on speed dial and I just butt dialed you no, I'm fine. Yes, there's a man here with me, but he's not telling me to say that. I am fine. And they said, well, the police is around the building. No joke. My wife butt down 911 and then after Max County, they don't play. They thought I was harassing her and they were coming to get me. And we went to the next door, there were the police. So if you want, if you got to get down 911, hope you're in Appomattox County if you get quick answers. Just like that. So, so, so. You may have convenience, but the thief is looking for inconvenience. First he's looking for an inconvenient time. Not his inconvenient time. His time is the midnight hour because you're going to be asleep. You're going to let your guard down. You're not going to pay attention to what's going on. You're sleepy. You're tired. You just lay right where you're at. And so during this time, watch this. This is when the thief comes in at an inconvenient time. And he comes in to take an inconvenient treasure because if he was coming, I mean, in the cool, you could put out some bait somewhere so he would take that and leave and all your good stuff's left. Put the fake jury out over here and he picks it up and leaves and leaves a good jury alone. You know, put some, put some whatever over here and he comes and grabs it and leaves. No, he's going to take something that's going to inconvenience you. He's going to take gold, he's going to take silver, he's going to take your watch, he's going to take your phone, your, your, your whatever it is. And so the thief looks for an inconvenient time. He looks for an inconvenient treasure. And then when he gets through, he's left you with an inconvenient trouble because you weren't expecting to lose some very valuable stuff. And so now you're having to regroup and re-get yourself together because of all this inconvenience in your life. I can guarantee you, when Jesus comes back, it's going to be an inconvenient time. When you least expect it, 
And if you're not ready, then it's going to be, watch this, he's going to take an inconvenient treasure because he's going to take your children. He's going to take those that are ready. He's going to take those in the grave. He's taking them all. He's taking those that are ready. And so you're going to be set back with an inconvenient trouble because now you're set back wondering, how did I miss it? What was going on in my life? How did I miss Jesus coming back? So it's a sudden return. Now, now, now I'm almost through. Now, here we go. Let's go ahead and, and say now. Somebody say second coming. Second coming. You ready? Second coming. I love this. The Bible says in Jude, and Enoch also descended from, from Adam. All the way back in Enoch. Prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that, that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and that all their harsh speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. When Jesus comes back, remember, in the rapture, we go up. We're changed. Now we have the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now we have the beam of judgment. Now we receive our rewards. And now, when Jesus comes back at the end of the second coming, he's on a white horse that's vesture dipped in blood. It's called the Word of God. He's coming down, but now we're coming down with him. You might, listen, can you imagine, how many here are scared of heights? You won't be then. How many here are scared of horses? You won't be then because you're coming down with him. Amen, isn't it cool? We're coming down, and we're going to be bad to the bone. Amen? I, I wonder if that's going to be the name of the song we're going to play when they come down. Bad to the bone. Bad, bad to the bone. Wouldn't that be cool? So, so a judgmental return. Say the second coming. Say it. Second coming. It's going to be a global return. I'm going to tell you something that might shock you. It would shock a lot of people. Get ready. I love this. Believe it or not, Jesus isn't an American. I'll let it sink in for a minute. We have an American night. Do you know we have American night pizza? Do you know that chop suey, chop suey is not a, it was not a, a, a genuine Chinese food? You know where chop suey came from? Chop suey came from when these guys come over in the early 1900s, 1800s, 1900s, late 1800s, early 1900s. They come together to put uh, uh, Chinese food over at restaurants and they had stuff left over. So what they did was they chopped it all together and threw it together. They called it chop suey. Everybody's loving this chop suey. This genuine Chinese food that came from America. Do you know if you had genuine Mexican food, genuine Italian food, genuine... Well, you can get some genuine Italian food and Mexican food if you get the right restaurant. But if you get this stuff now, Americanized, it's all got us in it. Well, we got Jesus looking like he's from, you know, I don't know, uh, North Carolina, Tennessee. We got him looking like, like, this, like this guy that was born here, raised here, got it made. You know what? Jesus was a Jew. He was a Jew. People argue, is he black or white? Is he black or white? Is he black or white? He's a Jew. There was these two preachers, a black preacher and a white preacher. They were arguing all the time about it. Was God black or was God white? Was God black or was God white? And one day they went to a conference. And went to a conference, they get in a car wreck because they were arguing about whether it's God black or white. And so they get in a car wreck and they're on the way to heaven to get into the gates. And they said, you know what? Now we'll find out if he's black or white. They looked and saw the great people all thrown over there and they saw the the angels around and said, there's God right there. So they walk around and say, I'll tell you, he's black. No, he's white. He's white. He's black. He's white. He's black. They come around the corner. As soon as they come around the corner from the throne, they heard, okay, Fasa has said. <laughs> Y'all slow. <laughs> now, Jesus <laughs> is not American. Jesus is a Jew. But all the world's going to see him because all the world hates Jews. But at this time, all the world's going to bow down to him. Amen? It's going to be awesome. Get ready. I'm almost through. I know y'all say, yeah, you say that all the time. Well, I got you this time. <laughs> Come on, buddy. You can do it. There we are. I love it. I'm just going to read this. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him was called Faithful and True. 
and in righteousness does he judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire, on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And the armies which were in the heaven followed behind him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth both a sharp sword, so with it he should smite the nations, and shall rule them with a rod of iron, and tread the wine press of the fiercest of the wrath of Almighty God. That's not my words, that's his words, thus saith the Lord. The first time he came as a lamb, the next time he's coming, he's coming as a lion. The first time he came, he was humble, and he was led, led by people. Next time he comes, he's going to be fierce, and he's going to lead us, and I can't wait. Amen? Now, y'all say second coming. Second. All right. Now, now I'm just going to go ahead and jump back in and watch this now. But the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with him in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, come to one another with these words. This scripture is so awesome to me because I was doing a study. And when I was doing a word study, I looked at that word comfort. Comfort one another with these words. That word comfort in the Greek means to be strong together. Wow. Things are looking rough in certain places, but we can become strong together because we know God's got it. Because everybody's got something in their life that they wish that they could change, but they can't be strong together. Trust God through it all, and He's got it. And here I'm getting ready to close it up. Watch this. I love this. Get ready. Ready? The end. Jesus wins. The end. Jesus wins. No matter what you're facing. The end, Jesus wins. Isn't that cool? Keep your eye on the eastern sky. Keep looking. The more I, the older I get, the more I look for him. The more things go on, the more I look for him. You know, it, it's just, it's just amazing. I, I was sitting there the other day, and, and, and then I was thinking about Bethany, and I was thinking about other things, and, and uh, I relieved Linda. She was one night, I was the next night, we were there all day with her. And and she had had the night before, and I was going to take this night, so I was going to relieve her. And as I relieved her, she was on the way home, and on the way home, uh, her dad had to wind up in the hospital. So instead of going home, she went to the hospital and sat with her dad in the emergency room, who was having heart problems. And I was thinking about all that, and I said, Lord, this is crazy. We've got a mother with Alzheimer's, her dad's got these heart problems. You know, Fibromyalgia, Bethany got cancer, blah blah blah, just just everywhere. And, and I said, Lord, how's it going? How's all this? How's all this going to wind up? How's this going to happen? Because I, I I know you're not going to tell me, but I'm still going to ask. And the Lord said, I you know that I can come back before any of this happens. I said, You're right, Lord. He says, Yeah, I can come back before anything else happens. So you just look for me, watch for me. I got you. Live life in view of eternity. I remember Mama. Mama and Daddy were getting ready to retire. And Daddy had all these big plans for his retirement. Then Mama, Mama started going downhill. It started with diabetes and it moved to cancer. And so she was diabetes and the cancer. But it was getting her and she was going downhill fast. And I noticed Mama who had all these big plans for retirement. All of a sudden quit worrying about retirement. And saw things differently. Now she lived life in view of eternity. Because she knew she was going to be going home. And I, I watched my mama go through this, and I said, you know what, Lord, I'm getting a very valuable lesson here. I need 